right? This morning you can turn in your Bible or your electric device. If you're tuning in online, we'll have scriptures online as well and uh, on the screen. Uh, but turn to Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. We'll get to that in just a second. I saw this car window sticker three times this week. And, and I don't know about you, sometimes I start thinking maybe you know, there's something going on that I need to know about. Uh, but this particular one uh, said, do you follow Jesus this close? You know this one? You know this one I'm talking about? And I wonder where people get this, this car sticker. I, it, it, to me, it seems like, like a, a Sunday school teacher convention. That, that maybe there's a convention and they hand these out to, to Sunday school teachers. I remember the Sunday school teachers I had growing up. And I could just hear Mary Ann Chambers' voice, do you follow Jesus this closely, young man? And I don't know about you, but I'm wondering, like, what does this mean? Like, is it, is it a sin to tailgate and I didn't know it and I just need to be aware of it? Like, like, I'm too close. If I can read this, I'm too close. And I might be in danger of hellfire. Or, you know, sometimes it can mean, well, maybe, maybe actually they're saying that I should be tailgating. I should be tailgating Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, do you follow Jesus this close? Because you're really close to me, and maybe you should be this close to Jesus. And, you know, I, re- I remember, you know, in the scriptures where, you know, Jesus told Peter to get behind him. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, The reality is we're going to talk about following Jesus today and and what that means and really what it doesn't mean. Because here's the thing, Jesus requires his disciples. and, and And I believe that some of you are here today and you're curious about what that is, but a lot of you are here today saying, yep, I want to be a disciple of Jesus. I want to be a follower of Jesus. But this is what he requires. He requires us to put his kingdom come and will be done above all other loyalties and influence. He is unapologetic about saying, I want everything. Now, the great thing is he gives us the grace and the truth over seasons to unpack that and give that away. I mean, he, he's, he's saying right up front, I want you to know that over the, the, the next seasons of your life with grace and truth and the Holy Spirit, I am going to be taking more and more of your agenda and your heart and what's in your hands and what's in everything. I will be asking of it. I'll be asking of Your identity, I I want your identity. I want you to lay down your identity. I'm gonna ask your sexuality. I want you to lay down whatever it is going on up in your head and whatever's broken in there. I'm gonna ask you to give that to me. I'm gonna ask you to give me your vocation. I'm gonna ask you to, on and on, Jesus says, I want control of your resources. I want to guide and control your time and so on. I require everything. And when you stop and think about that, man, That's so much different than what is marketed to us oftentimes on Christian radio and sometimes in the devotionals that we read, that Jesus, he's unapologetic. He wants it all. So that brings us to a question. It's a question that I want to wrestle with today as we continue in this series, part six of our family series, God's family and how we're a part of this family and how God wants us to invite other people into this family. How do we consistently and progressively make Jesus's way, truth, and life our formation over a lifetime? How do we let Jesus form everything in our life consistently and progressively? Consistently and progressively, meaning all the time and towards progress, not perfection, but progression. How do, we, how do we do that? That's a question that we have to answer. And here's the reality. The reality is something is forming us. We are a disciple of something. And I want to talk about three things that we so easily become a disciple of other than Jesus, and we don't even know it. Uh, one of the things that we become a disciple of is, is the dominant culture. We become a disciple of the dominant culture, media, entertainment. And what we don't realize is the media and the entertainment and, 
and, and, and the information that we're, we're taking in starts to form us and we don't even know it. This is an interesting statistic. Um, about 20 years ago, um, men in this country, uh, we were winning in alcoholism in the country. Yes. All right. Is this a good thing? No, it's not a good thing. Uh, but about 20 years ago, something shifted and women actually started catching up with us. The ladies are coming after us, guys. And this little, this is sarcasm, by the way, if you're wondering, is he serious? Should we be cheering this on? No. And they started saying, okay, what, what, what has happened in popular culture? And they trace it back to some things, some, some entertainment, Sex in the City. Uh, nobody's going to admit they watched that show. Like, woo. Okay, I see that person back there. <laughs> yeah, um, this, this show, this popular show on HBO, they trace it back to the fifth character in the show was a glass of wine or a cocktail. And, and they celebrated in this show these women in the city and, well, you know what the title is. And they would just, they were always just drinking a glass of wine. It's wine o'clock. Mommy juice. Right? And now with social media, you see it celebrated that women, women need a good, you know, just a good glass of wine at 10 o'clock in the morning. Right? Just right after your cup of coffee. Dominant culture can affect us, right? What we see, what we see celebrated, what, what entertains us, the, the things that all of a sudden we don't even know and we go, well, maybe this is what, maybe this is cool. Maybe this is, maybe this is how us girls have a good time and, and talk about life and, and so on and so forth. We become disciples of ideology. Some might call them the isms. Right? What are the isms? Socialism, capitalism. I'm a capitalist. I'm a socialist. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. Oh, you are? That's what you are? And there goes the ideology starting to come out of that person, the platform, the, uh, the one-liners, the memes. This is what I believe. I, I believe in fascism. Really? Okay, wow, that's, that's interesting. Don't invite me to your birthday party. The isms, the ist, I-S-T. We become disciples of ideologies. And we have our favorite, of course, temples of that ideology. Pick your cable news, pick your news source, pick your commentator, pick your uh, writers and philosophers. And what we don't realize is that all of a sudden, whatever it is that person or that group of people start to say, we start to go, well, then I, that's who I am, so that's what I believe. I believe in this. And all of a sudden, it's not us anymore. It's just the ideology that's beginning to talk. And what we don't recognize sometimes is that we just put Jesus, we just wrap Jesus in that. Well, Jesus would be a Democrat. Jesus would be a Republican. Jesus would be a socialist. Jesus would be a capitalist. And we blame Jesus on our ideology. Here's one. We become disciples of our family values, right? And our family has these mottos, right? Like the Bobbies. You know, if you're not first, you're last. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. So I was like, I don't, who are the Bobbies? You know, second place is the first loser. In our family, Right? We don't get mad. The Jacksons don't get mad. We get even. Right? And you know, you just, you, all of a sudden, like you grow up with this and it's like, okay, well, I guess that's what we do. We just get even. And somebody cuts us off at uh, Walmart and man, we're throwing down because that's what the Jacksons do. That's what the Johnsons do. That's what the Smiths do. That's what the O'Donnells do. We fight it out in the Walmart parking lot. Nobody's taking my parking spot. We don't get mad. We get even. And sometimes we get even with our fist. Okay, nobody's with me on this. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so I'm up here by myself. That's okay. We become disciples of our family value. And, we, and, we, and here's what we, we just, we go to church and, and we never question it. We never question the family value. Is it, is it consistent with Jesus? I don't know, but that's just what we do. 
Is the ideology consistent with, with Jesus? I don't know, but, but you know, I go to church and I sing the songs and I hear the sermon, but, but what am I really a disciple of? Am I a disciple of the dominant culture? Have I just sort of fit Jesus into that somewhere? He is one of my options, but really this is who I am being formed by. I'm being formed by this cultural idea. I'm being formed by this ide- ideology or I'm being formed by this family value. These sometimes become, and what Jesus says is, and what we just read is, hey, if you're not willing to put all of that down, even even your family and put them second to me, your ideologies, even the dominant culture, then you're not worthy of me. You're, You're not worthy to come after what it is. And man, you know, I mean, we stop and think about that. That's not real good marketing in today's society, is it? I mean, what we want to hear from Jesus is, hey, just whatever you want, whatever you want to do, just fit me in, fit me in. And I'll give you a nice little devotional every now and then. I'll make you feel good when you come to church and you sing a song, get a little emotional, hear a little, you know, truth that'll help you be a better X, Y, Z. That's not who Jesus is. He is saying over your life, through grace and truth, I want to progressively have more and more of your heart, soul, mind, and strength over over the lifetime. So that brings us back to this question again. How do we consistently and progressively make Jesus' way, truth, and life our formation over a lifetime. And so we jump into the Gospel of Mark. Now, we've talked about the Gospel of Mark already in this series. Mark gets right to it, right? There's no Bethlehem narrative. Uh, It's just, there's no, you know, middle school Jesus at the temple. It's boom, right into the life of Jesus, right into the ministry of Jesus. And Mark chapter three is no exception to that. It says, verse 13, Jesus went up on a mountain side and called to him those he wanted and they came to him. So he's, he's saying, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to gather my, my group, my community of disciples that's gonna help me spread this word first to Israel and then beyond. He appointed 12 that they might be with him. I want you to say that with me. One, two, three, be with him. That they might be with him. So Jesus had a lot of people who were hanging out with him, listening to him teach and preach and even do miracles. But he is in this passage saying, okay, I'm going to call some people in to watch my life and to be with me. I want you to be with me. And this really is what we have to to, to say. If there's some goals that we have as potential disciples, and I believe that there are some of you here today who would say, I don't really believe in Jesus, I, I believe that there's a God and, and I'm, I'm showing up today with a friend or maybe just out of curiosity. Here's what you need to know about Jesus. Jesus is saying, if you will follow me, and this is, this is what he says to, to, to Peter, this is what he says to Andrew, some of his very first, he says, come, come follow me. Come, I'm, I'm gonna show you something. He doesn't say, he doesn't say, look, t- take up your cross yet. He just says, drop your nets, come follow me, and I'm gonna show you something. And what I will show you, it'll transform everything. And that's how all of us start, really, as a disciple of Jesus. We all start with this invitation to come and see. 
Whether we were little kids growing up in the church or uh, whether we were teenagers at a camp or whether we were in the middle of our 20s or 30s and someone invited us to a small group or to a revival meeting or to a church service like this, there was this moment where we go, yeah, I think I will come and see what you're about, Jesus. But there comes this moment in Mark chapter 3 where Jesus gathers a group of people and he says, now here's the deal. I want you to be with me. I want you to watch my life. I want you to see how I pray. I want you to see how I think. I want you to see how I act. I want you to see how I foster relationships and and so on. And this is really the first of three goals that if we want to be a disciple of Jesus, we have to, to get on board with. And that is this. Disciple goal number one, be with Jesus. We have to be with Jesus. Why? Because the more that we're with Jesus, the more that we start acting like Jesus. And we're going to get to that in just a second. Uh, Someone noted uh, a couple weeks ago during Revival Week, they were watching online, and they said the night that Clayton King was here, they said, I noticed your Southern accent was a little thicker than usual. And I was like, you know, you're probably right. Well, why is that? Because I was hanging out with somebody from South Carolina, right? I was hanging out with Clayton King before. I was was talking to Clayton King on the phone and, and he admittedly is you know, from South Carolina and he, lo- he loves his barbecue and he loves the Clemson Tigers, right? And so when you're hanging out with somebody and you're talking and, and you're already from the South and, and, and like me, I'm, I moved to the Midwest in, in the middle of my, my adolescence and they took my Southern accent from me, but it's always ready for a trigger. You know what I'm saying? All, all, all I need is to be hanging out with somebody that, that's, you know, Southern, and all of a sudden, it just, it comes forth. Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know what you, yeah, I'll tell you what, man, we're going to watch Super Bowl tonight. It's going to be great. <laughs> Where did that come from? I, it's been in there. And then I go, okay, we're Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. You guys, you guys, let's get some pop. Let's get some pop. Okay, whew, now somewhere in the middle. I just offended everybody, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's Karch from Oklahoma. Yes, come on. We, we have to prioritize presence with Jesus, and that's the goal, is to be with Jesus. Why? And that's what, he, that's what he says to these guys. Hey, just be with me for a while. Be with me for a while, because I trust me, if you're just with me, things will start changing in you. We have to prioritize presence. What does it mean to prioritize presence? To live in constant connection to and awareness of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was the divine son who became the human Jesus, who had the Holy Spirit of God all over him, and he embodies a life that is completely guided by the Father and empowered by the Holy Spirit and showing the love of God, the way, the truth, and the life that all who would follow him would come to the Father. And what he says is, be with me. So what does that mean for us to be with? Does that mean we just hang out at church every now and then? Does it, what, what does that mean? Here's what it means. That there are certain disciplines that we would actually order our life in that include but are not exclusive prayer, prayer, Scripture, silence, and solitude. These are some of the disciplines. Now, here at Waymaker Church, we say this. It it should be a t-shirt here. Moments move us. Disciplines mature us. Moments move us. We are unapologetic about moments here. We, We want people to have moments. Every week, we call to some kind of response. Hey, look, some of you need to do this. You need to cross a threshold. Some of you need to make a public declaration. Some of you need to go take uh, the Lord's Supper today. Some of you just need to pray with somebody. Some of you need to be prayed over, whatever. Moments move us. What does that mean? They shift something in us. 
But we can't just go from moment to moment to moment and become more and more like Jesus. We have to be with him on the regular, consistently and progressively. And how do we do that? We pray. We pray like Jesus, right? And what does he say to his disciples? Hey, when you pray, something like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Just start with, he's your Father. God is present and he's personal. You don't have to say those exact words, but just maybe, maybe just start with just acknowledging that God is present and he's personal. He wants to be with you. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God, would you today, through me, through my heart and my hands and my actions and my attitudes, would you bring more and more heaven more and more of your agenda through my life. Your kingdom come, your will be done. I submit my agenda, and I just ask that yours would come through my life today. And see, Jesus teaches us what we know is the Lord's Prayer. Now, we can improv, and we can just say whatever we want to God. I mean, we, we get that. We understand that. But the reality is he's saying, I want you to be with me in prayer, in silence, in solitude. Next, turn with me to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Jesus kind of tells a little mini parable here. Jesus was always t- telling stories. Uh, he would tell stories with three acts. And sometimes he would just tell a quick story, right? Just a little, hey, it's kind of like this. Here's a, here's a picture. Here's a picture that you should, you should think about. And here's one of these little pictures that he paints for us. He says, Can the blind lead the blind? It's a rhetorical question. Will they not both fall into a pit? So he says, hey, I want you to think of it like this. Can the blind lead the blind? So you imagine these two blind people kind of walking down the path, and it's like neither one of them can see the pitfalls and the obstacles in the way. They can't even see if the path goes this way. And so he's saying, think of it like this. The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher, will be like their teacher. So he's saying, the reality is this, if you're following the dominant culture, if you're following ideologies, if you're following your family values, it's the blind leading the blind. Like, it, it, to our flesh, that sounds right, right? We don't get mad, we get even. But the reality is that leads to destruction, bitterness, jealousy, envy, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, second place is first loser, right? It's like, and Jesus turns around and he says, actually, the last place is the best place. And so Jesus is saying, if you're following anything else but me, you're you're being led by the blind. Wine o'clock is not really a long-term strategy for great relationships and health, right? Now, your dominant culture is going to say that. It's going to present that or something different. Jesus says, I want you to become like me. I want you to to start to, over time, let your character shift into being like my character. So disciples' goal number two, become like Jesus. The process of learning to live like Jesus, to think like Jesus, to act like Jesus. He's saying, I want you to be like me. I want you to put on a different lens of the world. I want you to look at people differently. People are no longer your problem. People are actually image bearers of your heavenly father. And they are, even if they've made themselves your enemy, opportunities to express the deep divine love that God has for you because you were once God's enemy. But Jesus, now, come on, come on. Now I want you to see people this way. I want you to see even the most difficult. I want you to see the stranger. I want you to see your neighbor. I want you to become like me. I want you to be like me. And these disciplines would include simplicity. This is hard for me. 
simplicity. I, I naturally want to complicate my life. I want to clutter my life. I want my life to, to, to be noisy. Whenever I get in the truck, I, I immediately put on a podcast or I put on a, a playlist and I just want to, you know, I, or an audible book. You know, I, wanna, I, want, I want noise, 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 noise. And one of the disciplines, though, of becoming like Jesus is actually to turn off the noise and just sit there. Sit there and listen. You hear that? Listen. A little baby over there, right? HVAC system humming. Holy Spirit speaking. Hey, don't take it personal. I know they didn't talk to you in the parking lot when you walked in. And they're probably, that their feelings might be hurt by something you said. Or maybe not. But here's what you do. Why don't you just go up to them, say I love you. Yeah, but what if they, what if they reject me? What if they, what if they curse me out right there in the church lobby? Love them. Love them anyway. Say, you know what? You probably are right. I am. I am an SOB sometimes. Son of a biscuit eater. Okay, come on. (laughs) Come on. It's okay. Don't put that in the comments. Right? You know, sometimes I, yeah, you know what? Sometimes I am that. But you know what? I love you, and I'm sorry. Right? Be like Jesus. Simplicity, Sabbath, and slowing fasting, fasting. Man, what a, what a, for seven days we as a church fasted. Pursuing emotional health. These are all things Jesus did. And when we do these things, we become like Jesus. We start to feel the way Jesus feels about the world, about our neighbors, about the nation's. I had a professor in college. I was an education major for a split second. Yeah. And I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but sometimes there are people in your life that have these really hard conversations with you that are defining. And there was a professor in college. She was head of the department at the time. And she... Took, she brought me into her office one day and she says, Mr. Dupin, you know when a professor calls you Mr. Dupin that something's getting ready to happen, right? She's getting ready to open up this Gandalf wisdom that's going to hurt so good. She says, why do you want to be a teacher? And I said, well, you know, I mean, I like to talk. I like to talk in front of people. Okay. She says, you're good at that. You know, that you're good at talking in front of people. She says, but you know, being a teacher isn't about talking in front of people. Oh, okay. And she goes on to say, hey, I've noticed something, and some of the other professors in the education department have noticed that you, you're a day late and a dollar short. Oh, what does that mean? Well, you show up late to some of the required activities and you turn in your work late and it almost seems, Mr. Dupin, like you think you're better than all of this. Do you think that you're better than all of this? (sighs) (sighs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I do. She goes, yeah, we can tell. You kind of sit by yourself. Do you think that, that, that your fellow teaching or education students are, you know, and she goes on to describe, and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> she said, let me tell you, Mr. Dupin, um, being a teacher is a calling. It's not about your skills. Oh, come on. We've got a teacher in the house. And she says, it's also about your character. She goes, 
I question both right now. Woo! Come on. Come on. So there I am, 20 years old, weeping <laughs> in her office. And I'm telling you, yeah, yeah, she, she, I mean, she was her quintessence. She had been a Christian school teacher for decades. I think she knew Jesus personally. Like, she was that old. I mean, she, she, so whatever she was saying was just like, it was hitting me. It was hitting me at that moment. And she said, you know, you probably want to get both of those in line if you want to be a teacher. And uh, man, I walked out of there. I thanked her. I thanked her because... I realized that there were things in my character, you know, she didn't say these exact words, but essentially what she was saying is, at some point when you show up late all the time, Mr. Dupin, people stop asking where you are and they start asking who you are. Come on now, come on. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And it was just one thing after, and, and this, was, this was love. She was in her denim jumper, you know what I'm saying? Her sweater, looking at me with the, I mean, pick, uh, it, the cliches were just right there. And she was looking at, and I just, I, I walked out of her office that day and it hurt so good. It hurt so good because I realized that I really wasn't called to be a high school teacher. But let me tell you something. The people who are high school teachers are called to it. And we need to look at them in the eye every day and say, thank you so much for showing up and doing this every single season after season. And don't ever say to a teacher, well, you get your summers off. I will punch you in the face. right? For them. For them. I don't even know where I am in my notes now, guys. I just, yeah, I'm just, this is, but, I, but I realized that I had character issues. I had character issues, and I needed to get those submitted to, to Christ, right? I needed to get those submitted to. I realized I wasn't called to be a high school teacher, but I also realized that there were some things in my character, no matter what I did, that needed to be submitted to, to Christ. And first and foremost, not just as a pastor, future pastor, but just as a follower of Jesus, that I should respect people, I should honor people, I should treat them with dignity. And that's a Jesus thing, right? That's a Jesus thing. Jesus wants us to become like him, like everywhere we go. And, and to never walk into a room and go, hmm, yeah, I'm pretty much better than these people. Actually, he says, no, no, no. I, I want you, I don't care if you're the expert in the room. I actually want you to wash people's feet. In fact, if you are the most talented person in the room at that thing or the most gifted or the most successful or you're the whatever in the room, if you want to be like me, you will actually leverage all of that influence to serve the people in the room, not to walk around arrogantly like you're above it all or better than it all. Can you imagine what would happen in this town? What would happen to the teams in business and marketplaces if they were led by those kinds of leaders? Not because they read some guru book, but because they're following Jesus they're becoming like Jesus. So goal number two, becoming like Jesus. Let's go back to Mark chapter three. And I'm gonna read a couple verses that we already read. And then I'm gonna read the ones that we didn't read. And we'll get to this final goal. And then I'm gonna ask Tyler to come up here and just talk to us about how all this works out. Mark chapter three, verse 13. We'll read that again. And then we'll keep going. Jesus went up on a mountainside and he called him he called to him those he wanted and they came to him and he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons to preach to proclaim and also to push back darkness right? Authority, 
authority and proclamation. I want you to proclaim, I want you to show and tell Jesus, and then I want you to push back darkness, the gates of hell, right? And sometimes that means actually calling out demonic strongholds. Wow, that's powerful. Disciple goal number three, do what Jesus did. Preach the gospel, teach his way, heal the sick, eat with those who are far from God, cast out demons, confront corruption, do justice, be, a, be an advocate of peace among conflicting parties. Do what Jesus did. That sounds hard. And you know what? In our own flesh, it is. Because our flesh wants to operate in the direction of least resistance. Pride, fear, laziness. I'm above all of this or I'm below all of this, depending on where you are. But Jesus says, I want you to do what I did because you're becoming like me, because you're spending time with me. Disciplines. Remember, they mature us. The discipline of forgiveness. That's a discipline. Forgiveness. Hospitality. It's hard, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I just want to come home and just sit. I don't want people's messy lives in mine, right? And I write, oh, wait a minute, I follow Jesus. So that means that I'm going to actually disrupt my own flesh and be hospitable, open my home, open my life, give my stuff. Generosity, spiritual gifts, evangelism, and so on. So how do we consistently and progressively make Jesus' way, truth, and life our formation over a lifetime? I'm gonna ask Tyler to come up here. And as he's coming, I'm just gonna summarize it by be with Jesus become like Jesus and do what Jesus did. And I want you guys to repeat this with me. Here we go. One, two, three. Be with Jesus, become like Jesus, and do what Jesus did. Tyler, yeah. how in the world are we going to do this at Waymaker Church? I mean, I was just hoping they just figured it out on their own. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Holy Spirit, right? Right. Yeah, yeah we got you it go. all. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny, but I think for a lot of us, that's what following Jesus has been like. Mm -hmm. Right, we, we come and we hear an awesome sermon. We go and then it's kind of like, hey, hey, figure it out. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you were really blessed that you had someone really intentional in your life. Maybe a parent or a mentor or a youth leader who helped show you how to do this. But for a lot of us, I think we, we taught ourselves how to fish in a lot of ways. And that's something that we really passionately want to kind of reverse here. Yep. Because it's, it's about the new and the deeper. We all have a next step. We have to be shown how to do that. And so I love breaking it down to being with, being like, and doing what Jesus does. And, and a lot of what we do here as a church has always been about this. Mm -hmm. This helps us frame some language. Yep. You know, one of the, one of the ways that, that we're, we're most, or, or we see in, a, in a, big, a big way on Sunday mornings, people doing what Jesus did is through serving. Yep. Jesus served people, right? And really what that looks like is not just serving people, but that's giving up our own time, something that's mine, and laying it down. Yep. Yes, I'm busy, but you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna step into Wednesday nights at Way Youth because, because there's, a, there's a young man or young woman that, that need to hear about Jesus. And you know what? I probably don't have it in my schedule. But when I read the, that verse about when I lose my life, mm. I find it, then we, we probably gotta find some ways to lose our life. Come on, man. Right, we gotta, we gotta lay that down. So that, that looks like serving, and that can be so simple, right? Being here on a Sunday morning, and, and there's a lot of different ways that we as a church can serve others. And, and the best resource for that is going to waymaker.church slash serving, or stopping by our next steps area. We even have a whole environment on Sunday mornings that can help show you a way to start serving. And that, that's just one of the ways that, yep. that we can 
do what Jesus did. Another big one that I'm super passionate about is community. Jesus was in community, right? I think it's really easy in 2022. I was, I, I want to say 2021, always. You got this. 2022. We're in uh, February now. Is, so, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. It was the Super Bowl. Yep. Go Bengals. <laughs> really go Bucks, because Joe Burrow's always a Buckeye. I am a Commanders fan since day one. So okay, okay. There's that. I'm sorry. But Jesus was in community. He, he, he brought the 12 around him and, and even others, right? Mary and Martha and, and Lazarus, friends. Yep. That, that he kind of could, could break that veil, right? He didn't just want to project this image, but, but he showed them his best self and he showed him at his, his most broken self, right? Jesus didn't have a worse self, but he had a broken self. He had those moments in the garden, right, where he had those closest with them. Come, come pray with me. Let me take you to the, the mountain, show you me. But Jesus wasn't just in community, Jesus led community. And that's a whole nother step. And it's something that, that I, I'll, I'll tell you if you were to ask me, hey, how many group leaders do we need? The answer is always more. It's always more. It's always more. Uh, yeah, yeah. How many people do we need serving in Way Kids? More. More. How many people do we need serving at, at, at greeters and in the parking lot, helping to create an environment for people to feel welcome? It's always more. And now this is not a, a, oh, judging. This is because I really believe people's eternity is on the line. Not just because what we do here, but the message of Jesus Christ, yep, the on. good news, the gospel. And that gets, gets told not just through a podcast, but through people living and mm. looking like Jesus every you single day. Preach now, come on. Being, being a follower of Jesus. And, and so it looks like stepping in, giving up a night of the week to say, you know what? We're going we're gonna to let some marriages come into our home. And we're going to love and we're going to create a way for them. Yep. Or, or for, for, for men or for women. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at, I don't even know what, what my next step is. And maybe, maybe that's where you find yourself. You, well, if they did this or if they did that, hey, come talk to me. Mm -hmm. Let me know something. You have an yep. idea. Let's find a way to help you take that next step to help create community in people. Because that's what we see Jesus do time and time again. Another thing we, we see Jesus do is Jesus sat with people that looked and sounded a lot different than him. Mm. that people judged him for going to those communities. Yeah. Mm. And, and I love that. I, I keep hearing you talking about us going into the, to the places in the world where the gospel is an ad. I love that because that's a part of, of being a follower of Jesus yep. is, is, is laying all the comforts of this life and going and telling others about Jesus. And you can learn more about those opportunities on our outreach page, waymaker.church slash outreach, mm. or at Next Steps. We have an environment called Discover Outreach. If your heart's like, you know what, maybe I do need to, to get into some environments that make me feel uncomfortable, or, or just that are just purely me sacrificing time and energy for someone else, that maybe I'll get the chance to tell them about Jesus. Yeah. And, and we wanna see that happen. And for those watching online, we have ways for you to be in community and to serve Others online, you can go to waymaker.church slash online, uh, and all of that resourcing is right there. But there's a couple more ways. I, I can keep going. Am I good? Come on. Come on. More. Uh, another, more. more. We, there's, there's always more. Well, one of those ways is through investing and inviting. And this is one that maybe if you've been in and around church, that could be like, rub you a little bit, like, you just want more people in church. You, you just want to have better numbers. Cat out of the bag. I want more people in church. Come on. Yes. I want more people. The cat is out of the bag. Cat's out of the bag. I want, <laughs> we want more people that are going to spend eternity with Jesus than, than without it. That's right. That's right. Does that happen by someone just sitting in, in a church service? No, of course not. But that looks like stepping in and saying, John, I want to I wanna invest in your life. Mm -hmm. I want to I wanna get into to your crap. Can I say crap? You can say it. You can say I want to get into your crap. I want to yes. know you what, 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 what your heart beats today. for. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what, what you struggle with. Because guess what? I, I struggle with probably the same things. And you know what? You, there's a place I come on Sundays that you're not going to be judged. And, and you're not just going to be handed a rule book. But I think it's a place that, that you might feel welcomed in. Mm. And you know what? And just maybe... Through a personal conversation, might someone cross from death to life? Or just maybe it might happen here at church. Or it might happen when they break down in their car on the way home. But you know what? We know when they walk into this room, they're going to experience the family of God. Come on. Mm. Mm. 
the family of God. And we want to be a place that, that is on fire about investing in the lives of others and bringing them here. Why? Because we are followers of Jesus. That's right. Being a disciple of Jesus is not just just mentoring. Is mentoring a part of discipling? Absolutely. Yep. But it first has to start with me actually being a disciple, not just checking a box that says Christian, but laying my life down every single day. Mm. And so that's what we're going after. Plus, we have some intentional environments down the road that are specifically designed for equipping us to being with, being like, and yep. doing what Jesus do. Yep. And that's what, what we're going to be calling Deeper. So Deeper is a class or a small group environment we've had for the last year, but we keep growing it and changing it. And it is really a launching point, a how-to to teach people how to fish. Yep. Right? Yep. Matthew 4, Jesus, he, he, he comes upon Peter and Andrew and James and John, and they're fishing. And he says, hey, lay your nets down and follow me, and I'm going to show you how to be a fisher of men. Yep. And we want to create an environment where we can show you how to be with, how to be like, how to do what Jesus did. Silence and solitude, what's that? I didn't, even, I didn't know what that was a couple years ago. I, I was like, that sounds like a monk. What are we, yep. silence and solitude, like being, being quiet, being still, and, and, and helping to show and talk about what that looks like. And so that's something that, that's coming. I think we had the date on the screen. It's not February 27th. Oh, look at that. 27th. Look at that. It's up there. Uh, that's launched on February 27th. You can sign up for that group by going to waymaker.church slash community. And then the last thing I want to talk about, this is really exciting. It's what we're calling our deeper one nights. We're gonna be doing these per periodically throughout the year, deeper one nights. And it's going to be an environment throughout the entire building. Uh, we'll have environments for our kids and our middle schoolers, uh, intentional time where we're gonna be diving into one of these topics. What is silence and solitude and why does it matter to you, your family, your walk with Jesus? We're gonna spend intentional time. Yep. And those are gonna be broadcasted online so you can watch those. And for our deeper environments online, we're also gonna be having some intentional content coming your way really soon designed for you. And really the whole point of this is because we know, we know that if we start to be with Jesus more, if we start to look like Jesus more, we start to do a little bit more that he did, the gates of hell mm. will not prevail. I'm in. You in? I'm in. I'm All in. Right. Woo! Stand with me. Stand with me. You guys fired up? I'm fired up. I am fired up, y'all. Listen, um, we're going to follow somebody. We're going to be a disciple of something, right? The dominant culture, ideologies, always screaming for us family values. Jesus says, look, that's the blind leading the blind. The blind leading the blind. Come follow me. I'll open up your eyes. I'll open up your heart. And I'll show you the Father. And man, when we spend time with our Heavenly Father and we look like Jesus and act like Jesus in this world, empowered by the Spirit of God, more of heaven comes to this earth and more of our neighbors and more of the nations bow to the name of Jesus and we as Tyler just said push back more and more darkness I believe that today is a threshold moment for us where we can just say you know what I, I belong to a church or I go to church and I'm, I'm not going to belong to a church or go to church anymore I'm actually gonna be the church. I'm gonna give up my time, my energy, my blood, sweat, and tears, because I want to be a part of what Jesus is doing in the world. And I wanna be a part of it with people who are just going all out and going all in. And so today, I believe that some of you need to get baptized. You have uh, spent the last several seasons of your life going, man, I follow Jesus, I love Jesus. And, and today's the day where you just, maybe you just need to tell the world and start right here with this family. And if that's you, just walk out one of these exits, go to our next step and say, hey, Pastor John was talking about me getting baptized today. We have a change of clothes for you. and We want to celebrate that story. Right now though, we're going to, we're going to respond in worship and in prayer. Our response stations are always open. If you're new to Waymaker Church, if you want to take Holy Communion, you can go uh, right down here. Right down here, we have response stations also uh, in the corners here uh, where the elements 
the body and the blood of Christ represented in the bread and the wine, it's grape juice, is right there. And uh, we have intercessory candles where you just light a candle and say, man, I'm praying right now for the breakthrough. There's people in my family who are struggling with health issues and man, I just wanna pray with them or I wanna pray for the salvation of somebody. We have response cards where you can write prayer requests, but I just always wanna invite people who are willing and able and need prayer to come down front here. And maybe you're just asking God for new spiritual giftings. God, would you, would you give me this spiritual gift? Would you give me the spiritual gift of evangelism? Would you just awaken and ignite that gift in me so that I'll just share the, 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 the name, the life, the message of Jesus with the people I come in contact with? Whatever, if you need prayer for healing, just come on down here. Don't even wait for us to start singing. Just come on down here. But listen, we're gonna sing together. We're gonna worship. And uh, then we're gonna walk out of here in just a few minutes. And we're gonna go make a way the new and deeper with Jesus Christ.